Hello everyone, Jason Alea back here again, and today we're gonna finally talk about the final saga of the original Dragon Ball manga and anime, the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai, or in English, the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament. This time around, Piccolo Jr. has joined the competition, and Goku and his friends must fight against other enemies to reach the top and try to fight against Piccolo Jr. to stop his evil plans of world domination. Now if you watched my other reviews of Dragon Ball the original series you will know that despite me having varied opinions about certain sagas some being better than others I've always loved the tournament sagas. Those are some of my favorite sagas and not just the original Dragon Ball anime so far now but in all of Dragon Ball, revisiting some of these sagas and episodes, even discovering episodes I did not discover or watched when I was a little kid, were very fun. And I loved revisiting how many of these action sequences were animated, how funny the show can be, how endearing these characters are. And we have finally built up to Goku now becoming an adult and we see him revisit some of his friends after training with Kami and Mr. Popo. That entire training segment, while short when he's a kid, I think worked very well to help us get to see him discover new abilities, learn more about himself, discover that despite him defeating King Piccolo, that he still has long ways to go. And so when he fights against literal gods at this point, he discovers that he's out of his element and that he needs to adapt, which gives him plenty of time because he trained for years up in Kami's palace and now he's prepared to fight against his literal spawn or at least the son of his spawn, Piccolo Jr. And he basically has the memories of King Piccolo. He is in the same flesh. He's like the same body, I guess a teenage or younger adult version of King Piccolo. And so he is at this point evil Piccolo. He's not good Piccolo that we know of in Super or especially in Z. This is when he is bad to the bone evil, that he doesn't care about anyone, that he wants world domination. He was a very flat villain that is a nice mirror against Goku who is a flat outstanding hero. And when I mean by flat, I don't mean in a negative way. I mean in a pure, like their characteristic type of way. Like Goku is purely good. He is pure hearted and is a singular minded character that's going to try and reach one goal in Sark. That is winning this tournament and winning against Piccolo. While Piccolo just wants world domination and is pure evil. There's no other traits that is nuanced about these guys while there's nuanced elements to these characters in certain ways. They are just showing off who they really are to everyone and so it makes for a very satisfying fight when these two eventually come up against each other. Now when the tournament starts it is fun. You know what I'll go back to even before the tournament starts seeing these characters interact and go into the training rounds like they're fighting against all these other guys who are definitely not gonna go into the finals. It is a lot of fun seeing these characters catch up with one another, seeing how they've grown, seeing how Goku has forgotten about certain people and how that affects those people because he left such a positive impact on their lives. And people like that include Chi Chi who has feelings of Goku and wants to be involved romantically with him. But Goku has no memory of her. He's literally been gone that long has been solely focused on the training. Not enough to forget his friends, but other people he doesn't spend as much time with like Chi Chi or the Ox King. He has in some ways not completely forgotten about, but is not really on his mind or in his recollection immediately. And so it makes for a very interesting dynamic when he eventually meets some of his friends and other peers that he's having a hard time 
recognizing and it makes for a fun environment in the fighting sequences in the tournament especially when Goku fights against Chi Chi and then when he obviously is going to beat her when that eventually happens. They eventually find out that Goku does remember her and that he thought marriage was a type of food. Which is just so in character with Goku at this point. That it's hard not to be mad at him. He's just being himself. And you you just have to... You just have to take it. You just gotta accept that this is who Goku is. He is a dumb, lovable idiot that is stronger than everyone else around him who are probably smarter in the IQ points and intelligence but he has more adaptability which will be then later on explored in the next part of Dragon Ball which is Z but we'll get to that when we get to it. Then we have Tien versus General Tao as a robot which then completes his character arc because Master Shen who is the rival against Master Roshi is wanting him and Goku dead, especially Tien because he has betrayed the his teachings, his way of thinking and Tien doesn't give in to coming back with him or to his insults. We see how much Tien has grown and has become not just a better fighter but a better person in general. Goku has impacted his life for the better and now he's able to be with people who genuinely do care for him not just as a martial artist but as a good friend and that makes his eventual thing that happens in Z again I'll get to it when we get to it but it makes it all the more emotionally impactful. We get all these fights with Krillin and some other people and we get this random guy fight against Yamcha and Yamcha unfortunately loses and then we have him fight against Piccolo but we come to find out that this random guy is actually Kami in disguise and he's trying to defeat Piccolo before Goku because he wants to make sure just definitely that Piccolo is gone as fast as possible but that unfortunately doesn't work and Piccolo uses his own techniques against Kami and so while this random guy is now freed, Kami himself has unfortunately been entrapped in this evil containment wave cup. And so Goku now having to face King Piccolo alone in the ring, or at least Piccolo Jr. I mean, he is now out of his element because if he kills Piccolo Jr., Kami dies and he doesn't want that. And so there are stakes here because someone he cares about, he spends a lot of time with, is going to pass if he's not careful with this fight and so with that the tournament starts and it starts off like any other tournament battle except in steroids it's more intense but once Piccolo Jr. eventually beat but once Piccolo Jr. eventually reveals himself to the entire world it's all fair game now there are no more rules to be had the tournament is technically over at least until Goku says so because he's trying to keep Piccolo in the ring because despite everything going on he wants to win this tournament this will be the third time in a row where he would lose and while it will be understandable this time he doesn't care at all he wants to make sure he wins and proves himself to be the best and this time he has to he has to kill or defeat Piccolo Jr it determines the fate of the entire world here and so seeing this battle escalate while Goku is trying to keep it contained within the arena and seeing all the destruction happen around and him refusing help from his friends it gets nerve-wracking the fight gets very intense and the, choreo and the choreography of the animation how fluid it is and how fast these characters are going and the impact of these punches and kicks all the Kamehameha's the special being can it's just amazing to watch this is the most Z the original run of Dragon Ball has ever felt it slowly starts off as a gag anime with funny moments with a few sparks of action here and there to a full-on battle royale by the end and it is so awesome to see 
And this fight is incredible. The way it is helmed, the choreography, the fluid animation is just impactful. But once Kami is free, now Goku is able to go all out and in some ways defeat and almost kills Piccolo. This fight gets that intense where the, by the end, these characters get very bloody and bruised up. It really does feel like this fight is taking a toll on these characters. There are unexpected twists and turns here as well. And eventually, Goku was able to finally defeat Piccolo Jr. And by the end of the fight, he has officially won the championship of the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. And seeing him just jump and fly in joy was so cathartic. We watched multiple sagas of him trying to improve his strength, his skills, and compete in these tournaments, but eventually losing by the end at a hair. Seeing him finally win and jump in joy and seeing all of his friends celebrate while also at the same time saving the entire world, I can't imagine a more satisfying end. Then we get a filler arc later on, which tells us a story about how Goku and Chi Chi which tells us a story about how Goku and Chi Chi eventually gets married. And while it goes on a bit, for my taste, like it's just certain events just building upon each other with no rhyme or reason, it is pretty fun. The fights and action is pretty cool there. Seeing Gohan return is nice. But really the real conclusion was at the end of the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. That was a satisfying enough ending for me. And you can watch for the episodes and they're fun. But if you want to follow more in line of the manga and you want to just skip ahead to Z immediately, I would say stop at the end of the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai arc. Because that to me was a much more satisfying way to end the entire series. All in all, this saga was epic. And re-watching this old anime that I didn't watch as much as Z admittedly back then. I watched a few episodes here and there but not enough to really get a full idea of it. Revisiting some of those episodes and watching a whole bunch of new ones especially for their stuff that I do enjoy at times and sometimes don't enjoy at times was still really fun to watch. A fun experience for me indeed. Dragon Ball is necessary really i know a lot of people especially in dragon ball fan communities haven't watched the original run in its entirety which is because z has understandably outdone it in every way possible but in order to get the full context of z and the full impact i feel like dragon ball the original especially the manga is necessary you need to read or watch the anime to really appreciate all the elements of Z that will happen later on. I'm gonna give Dragon Ball, especially the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai, an A. I love this anime, revisiting it, I had a lot of fun, and while I don't think it is as good as Z, I think it is near it. I think this is a great anime, not all the sagas work, but it is still whole lot of fun and I would definitely recommend it for anyone who wants to start Dragon Ball. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you guys next time.